Welcome to Child Psychopathology. I'm Dr. Susan Bodner, and I hope you're as excited to take this class as I am to teach it. This class is a journey, and sometimes an uphill one, where we will be considering the struggles and tumbles, the aches, and the strengths of each child getting to know them and trying to understand what will help each child thrive. We're going to be using the ideas of developmental psychopathology, which is a way of thinking that looks at how mind, body, culture interact uniquely and eat in each individual. So a metaphor that I have for this is gardening. So come along, step one of the journey, and let's look at the garden. So let's start with what's natural. This is a wild garden. It just grows. Nothing's been done to it. It's completely free. It's fine, except when it's not. And there's a lot we can learn about letting things be natural and run their own course. Unfortunately, we live in a society and it doesn't always operate by the rules of the natural world. And for that reason, we have ideas and thoughts and ways that we can intervene to make life better for individuals and for our society. And one of them, of course, is psychology. So last year, when the pandemic hit, I think it was hard for all of us in different ways. And each of us tried to find a coping mechanism. Mine was to grow plants. And when I was doing that, it made me think about this course and I realized that everything that I was doing would be great as a way of teaching you what developmental psychopathology is all about. So let's begin with this pepper plant. It looks good, but you can see that there's some really dark stains in there, which are caused by a certain fungus. The plant has a strong constitution. With a little bit of intervention, we've been able to help this plant thrive. Over here, cucumber plants. It seems like no matter what they've been exposed to, rain, thunderstorms, bugs, they're fine. Which makes you question, well, how come the pepper plant got a fungus, but the cucumber plants are not being affected at all. The same weather, they're right next to each other. The tomatoes had a really hard time. You can see that they're a little bit wilty, overwatering. We had to do a lot of interventions to, uh, to uh, help this plant, adding more dirt, trying to absorb more of the water. One of the things about tomatoes is that they're very hardy. However, they can be very vulnerable to a specific thing, which is overwatering. The zucchini, they run into a trouble of just overproduction, just growing, 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 and then they're not healthy. So we have to kind of pick regularly and keep them slowed down so that they don't grow so, they don't grow weak. We want these plants to be strong. And over here, the poor plant, same environmental effects, but this plant had a really hard time. But you see, it's still alive. Same with this one. There's still life there. So 
We do the things we need to do to help take care of it, nurture it, interventions. We do the best we can. So this metaphor of the garden helps us really understand that biological processes, cultural processes, combine in the production of each individual differently. No two plants are the same, no two people are the same, and our job is to help every single person become their best self, however their best self may be. This journey began long before us, this study of the mind, this enterprise called psychology, began a long time ago down many, many roads. And it ends in a horizon that we can't even yet imagine. So what I'd like you to do is join me in this endeavor. Uh, go to the Canvas page and let's get started. I look forward to meeting you. Thank you so much.